In this video, we will be tasting and talking about batch number 67 of the Eco Cha Tea Club, a roasted high mountain black tea. Batch number 67 of the Eco Cha Tea Club is a roasted high mountain black tea from the Yishan High Mountain Oolong, or I should say High Mountain Tea Growing uh, region. Uh, Yushan uh, translates as Jade Mountain, uh, which is the highest peak in Taiwan and happens to be the highest peak in all of East Asia. Um, it's a national park area. This farm is just north of the national park. And um, we met this farmer several years ago, maybe four or five years ago. Uh, I stumbled upon him uh, roasting tea in the Shreili train station or uh, just next door to the Shreili train station. His family has a long history of tea making. His grandfather moved from Lugu uh, over to Xin'i, which is the next township over, uh, closer to the center of the island, higher elevation. Um, and long story short, this uh, tea comes from his cousin's farm that uh, was rented to a tea grower uh, neighbor uh, 10 years ago or so and that neighbor decided to go organic at that time and uh, transitioned this farm to organic and evidently the plants uh, had a rough time in the first few years the yield went down uh, very significantly to the point where the neighbor decided not to continue uh, leasing the farm and our friend uh, decided to uh, begin taking care of the farm, renting it from his cousin and continuing with uh, natural farming methods. He has not uh, pursued organic certification, but he's totally done natural farming. Um, no pesticides whatsoever. Uh, and I believe he stopped uh, administering fertilizers of any kind. So it's fully natural. Um, and he's just allowing the tea trees to do what they do. Um, harvesting three times a year typically uh, I believe in the last several years that's only what he's done he hasn't pushed his plants too hard uh, and he makes uh, black tea from his spring and summer fall harvest depending on the timing this year spring harvest happened at uh, May 25th which is super late for that area so it's going to be uh, a late summer harvest uh, sometime in July he combines those two batches of black tea and then uh, stores them. So he, uh, he'll, he'll uh, harvest the tea, process it as black tea, have the leaves de-stemmed, uh, given that uh, organically grown tea tends to have a lot more stem material, and then um, store it and begin roasting it upon demand, basically. He'll probably do some in the beginning and then just uh, wait until there's a wholesale order, like ours, and, uh, and then take it out and roast it. So our uh, batch of tea sat from uh, last August, let's say, and uh, he took it out to roast it upon our demand to uh, buy some. We requested to be able to buy some after tasting what he had uh, in store, so to speak. He has a small tasting room uh, in Shreili. And uh, we thought it was really interesting. Uh, the roasted character brings out a kind of uh, tart sour note in the fruity character of the tea. It also has uh, a mineral aspect to it and a smoky aspect to it. So um, I went ahead and brewed it. Uh, I brewed 10 grams of tea in a uh, 200 milliliter Gaiwan pot. Um, I first poured the boiling water into a pitcher and then immediately poured it into the teapot. So probably cooling it down at least five degrees Celsius, getting it down to close to 90 perhaps. After uh, the, I think starting with the third brew or the fourth brew, I just went straight from the pot. And, uh, and the fifth brew, I um, allowed to sit for five or six minutes and that's in this picture here. So I have the first, second, third, fourth, and the remainder of uh, the first, second, third, fourth brews in this large mug here, which I like to do. I like to taste each batch individually. Normally, if I'm sitting and drinking tea, I'll taste it as I brew it, uh, individual uh, brews, and then uh, 
drink the composite slowly, let it fully cool down to get a full sense of the spectrum or the range of flavor that a particular tea has. Um, what I was, no, oh, it's definitely sweeter now that it's cooler. Uh, what I was getting from the uh, brewing leaves as I brewed was a smoky character, a little bit of mineral and uh, kind of a fresh fruit wood character, something a little more woody. It's, um, it's kind of mellowed out into a, something like black currants I'm smelling now. I was getting smoky plum, uh, which is what I originally tasted when I uh, first was introduced to this batch of tea. Or I should say what I originally smelled when I was first introduced to this batch of tea. It's a really pleasant, balanced, uh, substantial aromatic character. It's still quite warm, the pot. Like preserved plums, a little bit of maybe plum cobbler, something with that uh, remaining tart in the plum, but enough sweetness. And uh, something like preserved or smoked, uh, not really that pronounced smoke. Let's see what we get from the flavors. First brew here. Wow. That's a surprise. Very fruity. Amazing. I haven't brewed this in at least a week and um, uh, we picked it up. It had just been finished roasting. It tasted uh, significantly different than the initial batch, a separate batch that we, uh, that we made us decide to source this tea. And we thought, well, maybe it just hasn't settled yet. And it's seemingly continuing to settle. It's got a fruity perfume, more of a berry character. Really nice. Wow, that's an interesting uh, transition. I'm going to just keep flowing in terms of t uh, in terms of tasting here. Okay, more substantial, a little more of the tart character coming out. This is more of what uh, I remember, kind of a fruit woody character combined with definite uh, sweet tart notes. And just a touch of smokiness in the aftertaste in the nose, in the finish. Really nice balanced. Uh, the sweetness factor is really kind of just spread out and there's nothing. Uh, it's, it's just a more uh, integrated or composite uh, character to it. Hmm. Third brew, again, the, 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 the tang, I keep wanting to speak Chinese, uh, the soup or the, the brewed tea uh, texture, the mouthfeel basically is what I'm trying to say, is very smooth. The color of the tea, the, don't talk with tea in your mouth. The color of the tea uh, is a nice kind of deep copper. It's not as uh, dark red as a red tea or black tea is normally. It's more uh, similar in appearance to a, a roasted oolong, but it's uh, obviously black tea. We can see by the dried leaves. They're very uh, un, they're not tightly curled. Uh, they're left almost in their uh, original state after the processing, just a slight twisting of the leaves, which makes them uh, more prone to being able to be evenly uh, processed post-production processing, namely post-production oxidation and uh, roasting. So there's just more surface area to immediately uh, make contact with the air and then with uh, hot air when it's being roasted. Uh, I believe he roasted this uh, for over 20 hours. I, I, I remember 24 hours is what he said. Uh, uh, two, two sessions, starting out low temp, probably going up to a high of 110, perhaps at the end. Okay, fourth brew. Very similar to the third brew. Maybe slightly lightening up. Um, I'm going to go back to the last sip of here. That was very interesting how the, the first brew uh, kind of varied significantly from the second, third, and fourth. These were fairly uniform. I'm not sure what I did uh, to make that happen. <laughs> Nothing that I know of consciously. 
Um, let me take a quick. Yeah, cooked or preserved plum, some berry note, a little minerality, and just the slightest roasty kind of smoky uh, hint there. Um, back to the farm, uh, this guy, so he's been just allowing himself to do what he feels is right. I asked him a little bit more about his family history. Uh, he said his original family farm ended up being uh, neighbored or somebody moved in and started raising pigs. And he's just like, this isn't proper uh, for proper tea production. And he just let that farm go. That was uh, probably 15 years ago. And then his cousin's farm became available. He, he wanted to do something more specialized, more natural in his farming. He probably was 50, uh, at least 60 now, yeah, so he's into his 50s uh, and just uh, has been doing this. He typically makes his spring and summer crops into black tea and then his winter crop into an oolong, which he roasts similar to a, a, a modern day Dongding oolong, which we've tasted and it's quite good. We're looking forward to the opportunity to uh, procure some of that sometime in the future. Okay, here we go for the fifth brew that was left to sit for at least five minutes. Significantly darker. So having tasted uh, this progression, I think it's possible to push this further in terms of the amount of leaves used. So you could go higher in your ratio of leaf to water. I did one to 20. Uh, I think it could probably be pushed up to one to 15. And it, it, it doesn't have any astringency. It's a very tolerant kind of tea. Let's see what this tells us. Wow, super balanced. The mouthfeel is still there. The kind of, uh, the more fresh fruity notes are mellowed significantly. A little more malty coming out. Still very full flavored, very satisfying. Smoother, basically, mellower and smoother. So it totally handled that long steeping. Um, so uh, that proves that this tea has a lot of flexibility. It would be interesting to play around with uh, brewing it very lightly. You would probably get uh, much more complexity from it, uh, the refined notes. And we think, uh, we actually, I haven't had a chance to cold brew it yet. I hot brewed it and made iced tea out of it and it was delicious. So uh, I think it will work very well for cold brew. Given that the leaves are very open already, they should uh, brew quite easily. And hot brew, I know that it's a winner, okay? So I encourage people to make some iced tea from it. Just brew it hot. You can brew it uh, in a lesser quantity, 1 to 100 ratio. Um, play around with it. The, it's, like I said, it's very flexible. Whatever you brew, I think, will be satisfying in its own right. Um, and the, know that this is a very... Uh, simple and natural uh, tea production from start to finish with finesse. This guy takes the time to do what he thinks is the way to get the most from his produce, including letting it sit for several months. Black tea will get better with age, um, especially when it's hardy high mountain. This is at 1,450 meters. Uh, that's high in the uh, range of black tea production here. And, um, and he's an oolong tea maker, which allows him to know uh, the range of possibility in uh, processing his tea leaves. We uh, admire him in his whole outlook and uh, hands-on practice. Please let us know what you think about it uh, by leaving your comments in our blog posts or uh, in the comments section of this video. Uh, and we will see you next month.